Bond premiums and discounts. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our Facebook page, St. Louis Test Prep. The email, the website, and I teach my book, Cost Accounting for Dummies, in a free weekly live chat each week. You can email me for information there. I think bonds is one of the most poorly taught subjects in accounting because unless you've been in the business, I think it's a difficult concept to get across unless you've actually bought and sold or done something with bonds. So let's start off with a basic bond here, and this is a corporate bond. And if you can imagine the face of the bond certificate, the face value or par value of the bond is $1,000. That's what the owner, Bob Smith, gets when he redeems the bond at maturity. The issuer is a corporation, IBM. 7% is the interest rate. Corporate bonds typically pay interest twice a year. <clears throat> so that might be January and August or September and March. It's due in 10 years and the due date's 12-15-2019. All that information is stated up front for the investor to see. <clears throat> I'm going to, as you see down here, I've got bond issues at par, but what I'm going to skip over to is a bond that's issued at a discount. By definition, a bond issued at a discount means that the issuer is selling it for something less than the par value or face amount of $1,000. And we're going to look at this, as you see in blue, from the standpoint of the issuer's books. Okay. So we're saying on 12-15-2009, the issuer issues a bond at a discount of $980 per $1,000 bond. Now bear in mind, and this is key, the repayment on the bond is based on par or $1,000. That's what the issuer has to repay according to the bond indenture of the written agreement. So the entry for the issuer is the issuer gets cash in the door of $980 debit. The issuer has a liability, a bond payable, that they have to pay at maturity for $1,000. And to make debits equal credits, we need a $20 debit. And that debit goes into an account called discount on bond payable. Now, bear in mind that the issuer received less in cash, $980, than they're obligated to repay $1,000. One thing that doesn't change, regardless of whether the bond is a premium or discount, is the interest expense to the issuer. The issuer pays interest to the owner in the formula to figure that out. It's principal, $1,000, times the interest rate, 7% times the fraction of the year involved, six over 12, six months or half a year. So if we go through that math, which I do here, the interest expense to the issuer is $35 and cash is credited and reduced by $35. Now we have to do something with our premium and we call it, most textbooks call either whether it's a premium or a discount, bond amortization. Now, in the real world, we accrete discounts and we amortize premiums, but for most accounting textbooks, we amortize both a premium and a discount. So what we do is we take that $20 and realize we were willing to give up $20 to get the bond issued. That is an additional expense. We found out that the bond was due in 10 years. If you look at the bond certificate. It's a 10-year bond. So we are going to take that discount and we are going to recognize it and move it into expense evenly over 10 years. $20 divided by 10 years is $2. So we're going to credit to remove it from the discount on bond payable account. We're going to debit bond expense. It's an expense, as I put in red here, because you must repay $1,000 at maturity, even though you got only $980. It's an additional expense. Finally, at maturity, the issuer repays principal to the owner, the principal face amount. That $1,000, so the liability bonds payable is debited, it's removed, and we credit cash to recognize writing the check for the bond payable. It sometimes helps to see this discount in terms of a T account, you remember that we started with a $20 debit and bond payable. And we're going to credit this account $2 a year for 10 years. 
And at the same time, we're going to debit bond interest expense so that at the end of the period, the discount balance is zero and the entire $20 has been moved to bond expense. Let's talk about a premium in this case. Same scenario, we're looking at the issuer's books. The cash received is $1,020 more than the liability they have to pay back the bond payable of $1,000. In order to make debits equal credits, we need a $20 credit. We call that premium on bond payable. Important to note that the interest expense is the same. It's $35 twice a year. Same entry as we saw with the discount. This $20 is extra money that we got over and above the $1,000 liability, so it's income. So evenly over 10 years, we're going to debit to remove the premium on bond income, and we're going to credit bond income for $2 a year over 10 years for a total of $20. The reason why is in red, we received more $1,020 than we're obligated to repay $1,000. Same entry number four here when the bond matures. We're going to reduce bond payable by debiting. We're going to credit cash to recognize the $1,000 check that we write to pay off the bond. Again, if you want to imagine that in terms of a T account, which I think is helpful, we start off with a $20 credit and premium on bonds payable. We debit that account each year to reduce it so that at the end of 10 years, the balance and bond payable, premium on bond payable is zero. And over 10 years, we credit bond income for what we take out of the premium account. And at the end of 10 years, the total bond income, if I add it all up, is $20. So important to note again, that the entries that do not change, and I think it's worth going back to, your interest expense and your bond payable is the same, whether it's the discount bond, if you look at this tab, that's issuing at a discount, if I go over to the premium tab, issuing at a premium, I still have a $35 semi-annual expense twice a year. I still repay $1,000 back in maturity. One last thing, why would somebody sell a bond at a discount? It may be that current bonds in the marketplace of similar maturity and similar quality are selling at more than 7%, so that in order to entice somebody to buy a bond that only pays 7%, we have to issue it at a discount so that investor gets that extra $2 into bond income each year. That's as far as we're going to get on bond premiums and discounts. If you go to the website, St. Louis Test Prep, the address is up here. The toughest accounting topics are the topics that I'm asked the most about. And as a result, I teach these topics on an ongoing basis. These dates that you see are changed and are updated. If you want to sit in on a small group live chat, you can email me. And also, as I mentioned at the beginning, the book, Cost Accounting for Dummies, it's available on Amazon.com. And to help readers, I teach a free weekly live chat where I cover about one chapter a week. And you can email me. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.